James. Hello, mate. <laughs> So this is JJ. This is JJ. Hello. JJ's joined the happy throng. <laughs> for better or for worse. Uh, you just Probably for worse. Yeah. And you're just about to cut the rafters. So yeah, I'm just going to show JJ how to work this essential roofing square. JJ's going to be cutting the rafters. I'm going to show him how to use this essential carpentry square. So what do you use at the moment, JJ? Just use a roofing square normally. What, Sometimes a traditional use... one? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's been a while. Carpenter's framing square. So, what is that, an imperial one? Uh, metric. Is it? Yeah. Where'd you get that from? Garage, Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. A metric one? Yeah. Blessed with another fine day, James. Love it. It's going to be good you, for another two weeks now. How'd you do that? I had a word with someone. It's funny because when I'm filming with Dan Fox, invariably it rains. Or you could just come and work with us. <laughs> Bit of bad planning there because you seem to have finished up with two left handed carpenters. Yeah, I noticed that the other day. I thought, hey, what's going on here? Did, he not, one out now. did he not put it on his CV? Yeah. No, Where it say says any, any allergies or disabilities, he should have put left handed. Yeah, well, this is it. I mean, when we spoke on the phone, I, I assumed he was normal. <laughs> <laughs> he turns up. Tam, now I've got two of them. Times are changing. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Like, the word sinister yeah. originally comes from left handed. Oh, well. <laughs> the thing I really like about him is that he can't buy him, you know? Doesn't matter how many tools, how many freebies you give him, he doesn't <laughs> feel any compulsion to be nice to you. Uh, it's because you haven't given me enough tills yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's I what it is. a tipping point with you, is it? <laughs> yeah, there is. I just haven't bid high enough. You're still a long way off. Oh, mate. Can I pass some towels down to you, James? Yeah. Get rid of that one. And I reckon we're about there. It looks a bit complicated, this James. What are you, what's going on? Uh, it's all about supporting the roof, actually. <laughs> uh, so, so obviously the roof, this is the existing roof. Um, and what happened previously was you've got these, this, double here which is actually what well, you can see there it was a flitch beam can you just give us a little explanation as to what a flitch beam is and yeah. why people use them rather than a, a steel joist if yeah you like. okay well a flitch beam two pieces of timber and a piece of steel plate and it is literally that so it will sit in there like that and they're bolted together it's like a sandwich then. just like a sandwich two together like that oh, so let's say that's the top and that's the top that's going to be the top of the plate i like to keep the plate towards the bottom yeah. because that's where it's going to bear from so we put it onto onto the first one like that we get our drill about two millimeters smaller than the actual hole this is a 14 mil hole so i'm going to use a 12 mil bit <laughs> flip that over onto that one and you would be doing this on a great long piece oh, of yeah. steel when and you flip it over. They'll so be staggered all the way up, yeah. so yeah, it's not okay. don't flip as easy as that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So put that on there, flip that one back over onto there. Oh. And then we can get a couple of these. Forge fix bolts. So we'll get a washer, big square washer through there. And that's interesting you do that because I've done a lot of loft conversions in my time. Yeah. And we never used to put a plate washer on that side. We no. We used to bury the head into the 
uh, but it does pull through a lot, doesn't it? It actually? does. So I quite like the idea of using the plate washer. I never used to. I don't know why I've started it now. Yeah. No, but I think it works. <laughs> I think it's great. If you don't need that to be flush, I mean, the thing is, if you're cladding that with plasterboard, then you do want to bury it, really. Yeah, but yeah if, because you don't want like it sticking out. It's no problem. Plate washer there, plate washer there. I'll tell you what I like about these packs is that they give you the nut and the bolt. Oh, yeah, well yeah. handy. You're not, you're not looking for loose ones. That off there. This is a bit of kit. You love that, don't I you love jokes? it. So that's our flitch beam. So you've got the plate and the timber and the timber. Depending on what engineer you're using, some will specify flitch plate. If you ask them for a, to, can you work this into a flitch plate, it can be really beneficial, especially for the builder. In this situation, it was not easy getting stuff up here. We got a little loft hatch, which was opposite the dormer window that we built, and it literally just came through on the angle, yeah. uh, getting the timbers through and the plates. So if we, originally he designed this with um, steel sections, which Ooh. were, Probably 152 by 152, how awkward it would have been to get it through that gap and the weight of it as well. Yeah. So in this situation, flitches are so much easier because each beam comes up in three sections yeah. and then we just put them together up here. Yeah. So as much as they're a bit awkward to move around, you know, it, it made getting them in easier to start with. And then on top of that, you've got um, the added bonus of being able to fix directly into the sides, the tops, the bottoms. I think that's the joy for me, actually, yeah. is that you can just stick straight into it. Or yeah, gonna you do, can notch yeah. them around a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it's nice and easy for putting these brackets on. Yeah. If if we had a, uh, a steel beam up here, mm. like a you know uh, RSJ, it's not RSJ, mm. was yeah. it? A, yeah. Or a channel or whatever. Universal column. That's it. You that's see, or universal now. beam. Yeah. We used to call them RSJs, didn't we? Yeah, I don't know back what we in the day. But that's what people tend to refer yeah. to them as. Guess yeah. what we know them as. But you'd have to then have the centre of that all drilled out which you've seen on loft conversions we've mm. done before. Mm. Timber's bolted into the web, yeah. so then you, and then, but it still doesn't fully come out, then you've got a notch around it. That's this it. is so much easier doing it this yeah. way. Yeah, I think it'd be fair to say though, that if you did use steel beams, mm. you could have them in sections. Yeah. Bolt them together, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you can splice them. Um, Sometimes that's done, and they, they fabricate them with the plates on them, and you just bolt them all up. But yeah. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them I'm myself. Not. I just I don't know why. I just don't trust them. Well, when when the engineer first designed this with steel beams, I said to him, can we have it in sections and splice it? And he said, I'm not a fan of splicing. He said, we can. He said, but your sections are going to have to be bigger to yeah, accommodate the splice. And I thought, well, yeah. all right, they're shorter, but then they're bigger and more awkward to get yeah, in. yeah. And then, then he said, well, how about flitches? So I went, yeah, definitely. And it ran from the wall here to a centre wall to a far wall at the end where you can see those diagonal braces in. So it's just over five metres long. Yeah. So what's happening in the main house is that that centre wall, um, which is divided into two bedrooms, is coming out to make one big room. Oh, OK. But with that coming out, the centre part of this flitch beam had nothing to, to hold it up and it's not strong enough over a five meter span sure. to you know to to be able to support to support the roof so what we've got to do or what we've had to do is put uh in just in this section an additional five flitch beams mm. uh, from front to back yeah and then we've got a big trimmer here and a trimmer there which are directly underneath the purlins front and back and then supported every 1.2 ish meters on top of where the flitches are uh, so that is now supporting our original roof Go so we, so there's a lot more has gone in here but it's actually created a better space because we've got rid of the diagonals yeah, yeah. Uh, which is which is great yeah so it wasn't about making a big loft space it was more no, to do with just roof support the roof support because yeah. you're going to take that wall away exactly that yeah and you also said to me because of the dormers, yeah? Yeah, so the dormers, so this part um, is slightly, it's sort of half into what's going to happen with the dormers. So this flitch right here and the one that's at the other end are going to have another three flitches on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we've got one at the back, which is going to continue through to our gable wall at the end there. Yeah. One in line with this trimmer which goes back to the gable wall and then one sitting right on the end of this 
which is actually cantilevered. Oh, there's no, there's no support at that end of this. Oh, okay, it's a doorway. Yeah, so it's been designed to be cantilevered. Yeah. So we're going to sit a flitch right, right in here that comes up to the underside of here. Got it. That runs all the way through into our gable wall at the end, mm. and then it's going to have an Aris rail piece on, which is fortunately we've got a 45 degree roof. Little triangle, so basically. That's yeah. it. Yeah, a long so triangle. You just, so you just buy that stock there as yeah, well. Yeah, and it will push straight, it right tight in there. We can fix that down, and then we've got to use um, angled pitch connectors oh, I know. from each rafter down yeah. onto the onto the um, flitch plate. Yeah. And so the main reason is to support our new uh, dormer trimmers, which are coming up. Actually, these ones here. Those ones. And yeah. ones there. So okay. they're going to pick them up. And the reason we've had to do it, I mean, normally you'd just come a bit further up and go onto this pearl in here, but. Because we had to do it in 4x2, because the existing roof is 4x2, uh, that's too much of a span to take the weight of that dormer. Got so it. the engineers designed it so that we could still use 4x2, but reduce the span by putting this additional flitch beam in at the front. So we've done all of that here. We've got to do all of that as well at the other end. Oh, goodness. So it's a case of... All those Christmas decorations got to be moved again. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> For about the fourth or fifth time. So yeah. we're, we're almost here now with this part. Yeah. So... Um, uh, JJ is just currently putting these parts in. Uh, this, so it's a double six by two, and it's been fixed down with uh, forge fast timber connectors down into these ceiling joists. And then we've got these angle brackets, heavy duty angle brackets, which are going on there and into our uh, trimmer all the way along, and that's going to pick up the uh, ceiling. Right. So okay. hold all our, all our yeah, existing so ceiling joists up because so of, obviously that wall's going. Got it and this flitch is going, we yeah. need something now to hold that up. Yeah. So it goes all the way along there, all the way along there, and then once we've done that, we can lay all the floorboards, the loft floorboards back in here, yeah. and then we can get that lot out down here, and then go and start working up that end. Blimey, sounds like a bit of work. It is, yeah, but you know, it was... You're making good progress on it though, aren't you? I mean, we are. Um, I think we started on Monday, mm. I really wasn't up for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It was just one of them jobs. I thought oh, we everything was up here. We had all the flitch plates up. We had all the timbers up, and it's yeah. just it's like really didn't want to get going on it. Yeah. Uh, no, but fortunately you came in and helped us, which was great because uh, you seemed quite excited about it. So. Uh, well, you know, do, do you know the thing with me, mate? It's a novelty. If I had to do it five days a week, I'd probably be like you, Monday yeah. morning. Oh no! But actually, for me, it's a it's a, a bit of a change. Of yeah, activity, it was a good day. It gave me it gave me a real push. Yeah, that I'm I needed about that. to. Uh, well, if I, if I can provide that service again, I'll just push you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it. <laughs> You've still got a bit to do. You've got some plates round the back here. Yeah. There's, there's still another six. That, that's ten mil steel. Plate. Yeah, that's yeah. it. One fifty by 10 mil and they're all around about between 3.6 and 4 meters long yeah the other thing was these timbers were quite wet so they were quite heavy weren't they surprisingly yeah. heavy so they would dry out but when, when you lift one of those flitch plates with two bits of wet timber bolted <laughs> yeah. to the side of them yeah they're quite it, a weight it's, it's a lot and um, after you've cut out some of the existing support to get it in and the yeah. ceilings are bouncing up and down a bit it's all yeah. a little bit hairy at times but, but that's the way I love yeah um but the other thing is that I saw that you did is you used that little impact driver this time. People were saying to you yeah. when you did the last lot on that tail on that other job, that loft conversion. Yeah, um, we were doing it with I a, a just about to say what the name of the road was, but I'm not <laughs> going to say that. On that other loft conversion that you did, uh, I noticed you were doing that with a ratchet. But people go, "Oh, use an impact driver." <laughs> so you did actually take their advice this time. Yeah. Use the impact driver. Yeah, it's really good. Really, it just made a big difference. Super quick. Wind yeah. them all up. But Brilliant. we we were saying that. Actually, when you, you tighten them all up, but when the timber dries out, you can get another couple of turns on them, mm. can't you? It's quite yeah, sure surprising. Yeah. You know, just uh, a few weeks down the line. Yeah, even taking them. these old ones out, and he's been here for years, they weren't that difficult. They'd rusted a little bit, yeah. but they were still... They weren't tight, tight. No. No. Okay, mate. All right, well, look, um, I'm going to uh, just stand here and drive you on. <laughs> just inspire you to work harder. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you find any more uh, I didn't get more yeah we're running out of forge fast oh no um, yeah. what's, whole job of grind to a halt let's get, I don't know I, well I don't know where to get them we've done, station yeah but we did such a good advert for it everyone's gonna bolt them now <laughs> <laughs> let me go and see
What's that on your head, James? That's me hat. <laughs> I've got me all sparks out the front. <laughs> your head's grown. It has, since yeah, since, since I've been on, on the skill builder. <laughs> <laughs> it's got massive. But now, uh, so all those people recognise it. Still, still got me out though, so. Howdy. <laughs> yeah, who could that be? Stick a pin in it and find out. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with that too much if I were you. Oh, that's it. Sledgehammer. Yep. 